Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick Curtis, your host and chief monkey, and this is the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Join me as I talk to some of the community's most successful and inspirational members to gain valuable insight into different career paths and life in general. Let's get to it. In this episode, Dr. Snake shares his story along his path from a master's in quantitative finance in Italy to landing a quant research role at an asset manager in the Netherlands. His struggles with the cultural differences, how he transitioned to a bulge bracket bank in Zurich, and one key piece of advice he would have given his younger self. Stay tuned. Great, Dr. Snake. Thank you so much for joining us on the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Thank you. It would be great if you could start by just uh, giving the uh, listeners a quick overview of your background. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, after graduating in my master's in Italy, I obtained an internship in an asset management company in the Netherlands. And um, I joined for six months. And uh, uh, I was a quantitative research analyst. Uh, my master's degree also was in quantitative finance. So that was really uh, important to me basically to 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 follow the path of my studies and after that um, my contract was renewed for a year but I left earlier to go to uh, Switzerland in Zurich for a major uh, investment bank and uh, now I'm a quantitative risk modeler uh, in Switzerland. Great so you went from quant researcher to quantitative risk modeler from at, at mm-hmm. a um, the first place in the Netherlands that was not an investment bank or that was what would you call that? Just a, a small asset management company. Asset management. Boutique. Got it. Okay, and then you went from there to a large bank in Switzerland as a quantitative modeler. How much overlap from jumping from a quantitative research in you know I put that in quotes um, position to a quantitative modeler? Was it a lot of the same skill sets? Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of skill set, uh, quite a lot because of programming and um, so, yeah, and also uh, quantitative uh, thinking about any problem that comes out during your career. So if initially the problem was to obtain alpha and uh, obtain uh, important performance in investing and with uh, strategy, which were more or less systematic. Uh, now uh, the problems are more about modeling some specific uh, derivative uh, product and so there are, there are several uh, mathematical components, but also programming and infrastructure, and maybe it's more a bit more technical, let's say, than uh, let's say full of content. Great. So let's let's go back a little bit further into your history. So when you graduated your from your university, you were not a you were not a quant, so to speak. You were um, you had a degree, um, more like a general business degree, correct, or economics degree, and then you eventually went. Uh, what kind of made that decision to say, "Hey, I want to be a quant, or I want to get more of those, you know, coding skills that I can apply"? Well, uh, about the bachelor, the good thing in Italy is that they are quite general, so you can learn uh, some quantitative uh, topics, some more uh, economics and business, and so. Uh, finally, you get an overview of everything. So in your master's, it's up to you to to focus on something or maybe generalize and keep it general so that you can open maybe more opportunities. But uh, my main choice was to follow the quantitative path because I I enjoyed the portfolio portfolio and derivative courses and all these kind of quantitative courses. So I got more specific. Got it. And then in terms of like. You know, you're doing that during undergrad a little. You started do, dabbling in that a little bit during undergrad university, but then what made did you, what made you decide? Hey, I'm going to go straight. I think you did the university first, and you got your master's degree right away. Or was there internships in between that made you kind of reinforce that? Uh, no, no. I chose directly from my academic path. So okay. Actually, I didn't have any. Yeah. And was there a reason besides you just enjoying the modeling and stuff like that? You enjoyed kind of the, the challenge of of the modeling. Uh, you mean from from the Netherlands to Switzerland? No, I mean or just generally... still still in school. Like, what, you know, okay. what kind of guided uh-huh. you toward that? Uh, well, um, the normal, let's say, uh, economic 
us and uh, and um, courses uh, at least in Italy, but I guess in general uh, are sometimes quite theoretical. So basically, you have a lot of discussions about what happens with monetary policy or uh, taxation and maybe some low and so some some yeah you know uh, this kind of topic. But when I went to my, uh, for example, uh, derivatives courses, and you had to discuss about option strategies or uh, how to price a future, how to price a mm -hmm. book, and all these kind of problems, that was really engaging for me and challenging and interesting. It was more so tangible. Said, okay, yeah. This is what I want to do. It was more tangible. Yeah. You could actually sink your teeth into a specific problem, and it wasn't all theoretical, in other words, right? Is away from yeah, the theory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was more, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. It's more like this is true business. This is really something that maybe one day I will need to to do to to add value to my company. Well, actually, if we discuss monetary policy, yeah, it <laughs> could also be your job, but you know, <laughs> not really easy to get. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. So, tell me a little bit before we jump into the jobs. Tell me a little bit about the recruiting out of your master's degree. Um, you were. Mm -hmm. um, you were doing this degree uh, in Italy, correct? Yes, and, and it lasts uh, by by low uh, two years, so it's more mm -hmm. than a master somewhere else. Yep. So it's a two year master's in Italy, and you basically are you know doing a lot of this kind of uh, quantitative modeling and quantitative finance, um, learning that. Mm -hmm. And then, can you tell me what the specific interviews were like? How did you even recruit? Was there on campus mm -hmm. recruiting? Were people coming there, or how did you? Did you have to do a lot of networking? To, and 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 what countries were you targeting, or was it just it, within Italy? Mm -hmm. Well, during my degree, I I started looking for a job or an internship more than a job uh, inside uh, my my room, my my my, my city, which was mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And um, so there were some opportunities, but not many as, for example, you can have in Milan. So I was already open to relocate. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I had some English skills. I tried to to learn more and get more fluent in everything. And so I said, okay, why not looking for other countries? And so I started looking everywhere I could do something more related to my to my degree because in my city there wasn't much of opportunities. And uh, so what happened was basically that I started on LinkedIn, on Indeed, on a financial career, mm -hmm. which was where I found out in the latter I found out. Uh, the, the, the internship opportunity, which led me to the Netherlands and was uh, focused on quantitative research, which was really the top for me. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, I applied and yeah. And the so you, I did, I think, a lot of interviews, a lot of stuff, a lot of applying, a lot of uh, stupid things I said during the interviews, a lot of, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you have to experience this, so I think it's really important to to never give up. And it was like hundred or two hundred jobs I applied in one year only, in a few months in the summer before graduating in November. So was this during was this during your internship recruiting period? Like, so it, when do you start your internship recruiting during the masters? It's a two year program, so are you immediately starting recruiting, trying to find something mm -hmm. for the summer after your first year? Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I ended up my studies and I was applying already, maybe graduating later, but already starting the internship so that I could uh, even do it uh, from another country, but coming back just for graduation. So I was open to everything. Yep. But uh, fortunately, they called me immediately after my graduation. Actually, the same day of my graduation, they called me when I was discussing. And so <laughs> uh, that was really a, a good news for me. But yeah, the process took some months even. Oh, so you didn't have the job till you didn't have the full time offer until you were graduating. Until uh, exactly. Oh but wow! The, actually, but, when I graduated, yeah. but you had already worked there over the summer or as an intern um, for them. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, you hadn't. Okay, so uh, did you have to? Did you have to go yeah. work for them as an intern first before they gave you the full time? Or they just mm -hmm. gave you the full time right away? Exactly. Exactly. After that, yeah. They gave you the full time offer right away. You didn't have to work mm -hmm. as an intern. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, uh, it was directly full time. It was yep. an internship, but directly full time, so not just uh, for for the summer or something. So we... for six months. Yeah. And uh, after this period, they gave me a full time offer for one year, so still not uh, a permanent position. 
that's why I chose to change basically. So were you nervous when you were given kind <laughs> of a, you were only given a kind of a, almost like a part time, not part time is a full time, but it was uh, not a permanent place, but you, and you say, Hey, yeah. come to our country, you know, leave everything, you know, and you're only going to get a, Exactly. Uh, and <laughs> you're not only, much money, so that's also the problem. And not much money, which is surprising given your background, but I guess it was your first job out of school, really. So, yeah. yeah. Do you mind yeah. sharing kind of what that pay was in rough ranges? You don't have to give us the exact, but, and then also, can you talk a little bit about just that transition and, and kind of your thought process going in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, the transition from Italy to the Netherlands is quite big because the culture and the way people are, it's completely different, really. And uh, so I wasn't really afraid because I was focused on my uh, career path and I was saying, yes, this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to be quantitative researcher one day. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's perfect. It's my opportunity. I will do everything I can to, to, to do the best and show that I can create something good and alpha and so on. I was a bit prepared, but not so prepared as, yeah, you know, someone who has already experienced or at least a summer internship, which at least knows how maybe more or less companies work. So yeah, I was nervous about that, but I was more than that excited. So I was really happy to to go outside my, my, my place. I've always been yeah, someone who likes actually to travel and to see something new. So Had you been to the Netherlands? Way. Had you been there before, before you moved? Uh, yes, oh, you I was had? there okay. before. Uh, mm -hmm on holidays obviously and yep. uh yeah i like it because it's really clean and yeah more it's beautiful there also. yeah compared to italy also <laughs> there's a big difference and uh yeah talk so, to me about that so, culture so shock talk to, talk to me about that culture shock what do you think was the most surprising thing going from italy to the netherlands and then specifically like when you when you got to your seat in the netherlands how the company worked what was the surprise hmm. the most surprising thing from being a student to actually being a professional Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing uh, is, of course, English, because <laughs> in Italy you have like 30% people speaking English, more or less, if you're lucky, uh, while uh, in the Netherlands it's 96% of people speaking English, so actually everyone speaks very good English, yep. and that was the first thing, because, yeah, I spoke in Italy, I, I studied, but it wasn't like living every day in English, so that yeah. was my first yeah, through, through, through the first difference I found. Then also the fact that you have the trams and public transport, which will bring you at work exactly at the moment you want. So if you're late, if you're late, but if you're on time, the tram won't leave you. And so that was also another thing very different from my culture, let's say. Mm. And also the fact that, um, yeah, after this, you can also see that in this kind of company, this was an American company, actually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the people were international, mainly Dutch, but international. And you could see that uh, you could come in at any time. You could go away at any time. That wasn't a problem. The problem was about delivering. Well, in the Italian culture, and I think not only there, that's the culture of you have to come at that time. Otherwise, you, yeah. They take you out. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. So or, you're saying they th there was not really FaceTime. It didn't really matter when you came or got. It was more about performance and when you actually exactly showed up. exactly. Mm -hmm. And were there good ways to measure your performance? I mean, I assume as a quantitative research analyst, you have a little bit. There's, it's a little bit easier to see the value you're creating. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. They want. I, for example, a project in which you deliver this strategy, and uh, yeah, you have some flexibility so you can manage some details but they want basically that you consume this kind of data and produce a strategy which performs good or if performs bad let's see we know and you back test and you show and there's a fixed time so i mean you have two or three months to show us this mm -hmm. and yeah whatever you want to do at any time all the time you want how much yeah. did your how much did your studies actually prepare you for something like this, or was it a lot of learning on the job? I mean, obviously you had the base knowledge and the tools, and you knew how to do the back testing and all the important things of a quant research analyst. But how much was it you learning on the job, and was it surprising how different it was from academic to to a professional? Yeah, well, it was uh, quite different, but not so much because your job is still not. In, the, in this case, it wasn't an edge fund or a quantitative systematic company, which basically runs these strategies all the time. Mm -hmm. It was more like a direction for portfolio managers. 
So mm. actually, it's close to academic because you have just to show that this this um, this strategy performs in some way, some indicators of the strategy, some ratios, and this kind of stuff, volatility and everything. And they can say, okay, we know now this strategy is like this. We'll use it like a signal and yeah, then we follow its directions or not, depending on what's the outcome. Got it. So what made you think, you, what do you think was the most important part about you being successful? So it was a six month kind of temporary position. Then they offered you the full, another year once those six months was kind mm -hmm. of coming up. What made you, what do you think, why do they want to keep you? What made you most successful? What was the most impo important part? I think the most important part is commitment and showing that you care, showing that you're interested, showing that you want to go in depth and showing that you want to, to improve because uh, that's something really important also for me in a company in general as a culture because some companies just want, yeah, the return from the strategy and this is not possible for interns. I mean, it, it, they can do something, but they will do a lot of errors, a lot of stuff and it's normal and it's no problem. So I think the most important, I also did error. So that, that wasn't, yeah, I mean, that was uh, into account. So what you need to show is that you really want to improve, that you really want to, 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 to contribute, that you really want to understand what are the problems for the others and to help them. Yeah. I mean, you were so, uh, you were so junior, you were so junior. It was expected that you had errors. So did you have a good manager or a main quant analyst mm -hmm. there that was overseeing yeah. all your work? That was a good mentor. Yeah, a good mentor. Yes, mm -hmm. that's really important. There was only one other one, so the others were with a different background. So Got it. maybe credit analyst, maybe portfolio manager. Yep. But the quant was only one, and he was really, really good and helpful, and uh, yeah, you know everything. So he helped me a lot in understanding what I did wrong, understanding that others don't want to see, you know, the model or the complex stuff you're doing, but actually they want to see the performance or a, a nice graph doing in the right way right. and to show good results in, in a good way, in a good shape. That's the thing. So yeah, it was really helpful. So the team in general, but he, uh, especially his position. So what made you so confident you had a good mentor in place, you were given a full year offer? When did you decide it was time to actually start recruiting again, potentially jump ship? It sounds like you had a pretty good situation there. So what, what went into that thought process? Mm -hmm. Well, it was really good, but uh, I had some personal uh, targets. My personal target was firstly to have a permanent position and uh, another year of internship. I mean, a fixed term contract, but was like an internship a bit more uh, yeah, remunerative, remunerative and in terms of everything, but uh, I, I wanted a permanent job. I wanted it also to join um, maybe a bigger office, but not because the small office is bad. Just, I think, yeah, the team was very good, but, you know, the Netherlands is anyway a, a different country from Italy, a different culture, maybe more different than Switzerland to Italians. So basically you have to also to understand that, yeah, uh, you have a few friends because they are quite close. Uh, if you don't speak Dutch, even if they speak all English, while here the Italian community is bigger or in general you are closer, so they behave even German or everything international because Zurich is really international. So you're saying you know, it, you're saying international. You're saying being in the Netherlands was a little bit hard on a social setting. You only had a few friends um, because it was like yeah. if you weren't Dutch, it was hard. Whereas in Switzerland, mm -hmm. it was a little more international, and you have your com Italian yeah. community, and, and you felt more at home there. And is that something you knew, mm -hmm. like you yeah, wanted to target? Did you want to target Switzerland? You knew you wanted to be there kind of before? Yes. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about yeah, that recruiting like process. Especially, yeah, but yeah. also other places, also London, also other places, yeah, which are international as well. So tell me about that recruiting process. How did that, how did that um, go? Mm -hmm. When did you start that and how long did it take you? Yeah, for my internship or for my job? Because they were really different. For uh, let's start with the internship. I assume the internship was first, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, with the internship was quite easy. I mean, they wanted to know that I had some exposure. They they saw my CV and this kind of stuff, but it was all about talk. So to understand if I could understand what they said, understand how the business more or less worked, but there wasn't really a technical part. Just some questions about what I did in my in my 
thesis and in my academic experience and also in my uh, freelancing experience, which was another important component, I think, of my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, But after that, um, yeah, it was it basically, I had a, to speak with the strategies and the points, which were mainly responsible for the project. And then also to speak with uh, the main portfolio manager, the, let's say the, the, um, the yeah, kind of the boss of the office in that case. So you were, and, uh, uh, let me just ask you a question. So you were, you were interviewing for an internship first, but then you had, so you had to go get the internship first and then you already made the jump from the Netherlands to Switzerland or why were you interviewing for an internship first and then the full time? I, I'm curious, I'm confused about how that works. Uh, no, okay. Um, I had this interview process in my internship, uh -huh. so to speak with the quant and the strat and then the portfolio manager, but it was just talk, just understanding, just my my path, okay. my my interest. My interest. While in the in the other part, it was completely different one, because uh, to join this company in Switzerland, which was also bigger, you have an online assessment, and then you have uh, to speak with the, your direct colleagues, and you have the technical part. This was a bit more uh, convoluted as a process. And um, in this case, for the job, I mean, uh, it took much more, obviously, but really a lot, probably because of bureaucracy also and this kind of stuff. Right, larger but, bank, yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, this very big bank. Many more rounds yeah, of interviews and, and whatnot, yep. But this was for a full-time position, yeah. correct? You were interviewing for a full-time position. It's yeah. just you started when you were an intern with the... Uh, yeah. the firm in the Netherlands kind of doing these calls and these discussions. Is that correct? Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, to to get the other position, no, actually, they just renewed that there wasn't a, a process. So after the internship, I was there. Yeah, I know, but you you had started you had started in the Netherlands kind of reaching out. How yeah. many how many months into your internship uh, there? Um, into my, yeah, for the for the for the application to 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 the Netherlands, it took like three months. While for my application to the full time job uh, here in Switzerland, it took like uh, I don't know six, seven. A lot. Months. Wow. Okay. So it was really yeah, yeah, yeah long a lot, long time a lot. period. Okay. And so yeah, tell me a little bit about that. So when did you know that you were going to get it or you were close? You started going through all the bureaucracy, all the rounds, and kept in touch. <laughs> how did you know what to yeah. do? Like, how did you know? Okay, I should reach out again. Did did it ever go stale? Did it ever stop and you thought it was over when you had to like keep pushing? Or did it was there always were you always in process? I have always been like in process. So even if uh, a company already gives me uh, the second interview, second round interview, and I don't know if there's a third round or not, I always ask, obviously during the interviews, but some people say, no, we'll let you know in one month and then it's two months instead of one. Yeah. I had this experience with another major bank, for example. Yes. Yeah. Uh, called me like one month after the last round interview, telling me we are still interested. Are you still available? I said, yes. Okay, we'll let you know. And never heard again. So it was like, you know, <laughs> refreshing. It's very they, common. They were still thinking, but they, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very it's common. common. Yeah. And, but, but yeah, uh, in, the, in general, I think you know when you look, I mean, when you speak with your team and you have a good feeling with the team and they seem to have a good feeling with you, that's perfect because you understand, okay, these people want me. It will take a long time maybe. So I will continue pushing. I won't think, okay, it's done, stop. I can relax. No, that's not possible. But you can have a good feeling and say, okay, this is probably coming. So I have to think if I want to go in Switzerland, if I go want to have this salary range, let's say, because they give you obviously the range, not exactly the salary. But yeah, this kind of stuff, you have to, to start thinking and saying, okay, when they call me, I have to give an answer. So I yeah. have to say yes or no. Got it. And can you tell and me a little bit about that salary range, both then the the first position as an mm -hmm. intern coming into the Netherlands and then specifically now at the larger bank and in Switzerland? Do you mind giving me a rough range? Yeah, 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 rough range, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the internship, it was uh, between 500 and 800 euros per month, so mm -hmm. really not much, and this, <laughs> this is really a problem. But you have also to accept some of these conditions to work fine. Then, yeah. No, it's your first it's opportunity. Like it's great. You got it. I mean, that's the key is getting that first job. Yeah. So who cares about the pay? <laughs> so, all right. And then, and then the yeah, second yeah, position. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, depending <laughs> on the situation. Yeah. Uh, the second, the second step was like, uh, um, in between 100 and 100, 
five, one, sorry, 1,000 and 1,500. And uh, in this job here in Switzerland, I get between, uh, for a junior position, obviously, between 90,000 and 100,000 francs per year. So francs, okay. That's, that's the range, yeah. Perfect. That's really helpful. Thank you for sharing that with the listeners. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah, no and problem. then, um, so yeah, so let's go back a little bit. So the recruiting was a long drawn out process. You kind of, I don't know, it seems, it seems like it's a little bit stressful because you have, at least you were given that extra year. So you know, you had, you, you know, you had time in the Netherlands. If you had to wait, it would be okay. But were you talking, were you in multiple processes here? Was it not just this one bank? Were you trying to get other, yeah, I assume yeah, you were I doing had, a lot, right? I had a lot in the same time, yeah, because it took a lot of time. So in the meantime, I said, okay, I won't stop, and I applied for a lot of jobs. Right. I think, yeah, I applied more or less to, I mean, according to LinkedIn, <laughs> but uh, including so I financial careers and indeed, which were other main sources for my applications, I think I applied to kind of 200 jobs in, I don't know, five, four or five months. Yeah. When I was there in the, in the internship, right, and I got I think fifty sixty interviews. So at least a first call and also a discussion in in depth about the that's job great. and everything. That's a and pretty good hit. That, that's a really good hit rate, actually. So you're getting about fifty discussions mm-hmm. out of two hundred applications. You're getting almost twenty to thirty percent, right? Um, actual yeah, first yeah, round yeah. interview, which is amazing, and that I think that speaks really to the the demand for your skill set. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a yeah. huge demand for your skill set. So, you know, to all the listeners out there that still don't know what to do, if you have the chops to be a quant, <laughs> quant researcher and have the technical <laughs> aptitude, it's probably a very good place to be in the next 10 years. But, um, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about your position now in, in, in Switzerland. Is, how's it going? Is it, do you feel like you're growing um, and, and that type of stuff? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm definitely growing because um, my experience here is. Uh, positive. I mean, I'm learning a lot of technical skills, so more programming languages, more, uh, let's say, you know, skills in programming because you can program in several ways and some are really bad, even if you know a lot of programming languages. So that's kind of starting to, I don't know, learn talking maybe, this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, and also, yeah, so from this perspective, also to join a big company is helpful because you have a lot of tools, a lot of stuff ongoing so you're always busy and you're not really getting bored and it's important what's what are your and, hours uh, yeah. what are your hours like right now as a as a quant researcher there uh, my hours are uh, in general during the week you have to work 45 hours per week so no, it's not bad. Uh, you can come and go away more or less whenever you want but mm-hmm. yeah that is the kind of time you can also have some periods of more time and some period of less time you have to keep the balance but yeah that's great. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. 45. No, no. Isn't it? So yeah, sometimes it's, sometimes it's 55. It's really, it's really yeah. Important. Yeah. And, and so it sounds like you're enjoying your life a little bit more out there. You have a good kind of community there. Um, and have, I assume yeah, you have, yeah. yeah, that's great. This is very different from the Netherlands. So yes, yeah, a bit more community, more, more activities. Yeah. That's I wasn't fun. in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So that's another key factor because if you're in Amsterdam, maybe you have more to do. But if you're not in there, maybe it's a bit more <laughs> difficult to get. It's more isolated. Uh, yeah. And stuff. yeah. Yeah, for sure. If you're not in a big city, that makes sense. Great. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything else you'd yeah. like to share with, I mean, anything else specifically in terms of if someone wants to break into this type of career, any advice you want to share with the community or something you would have, advice you would have given yourself when you were younger if you knew all all know what you know now of course yeah if if i if i find myself in a yeah younger i mean during the masters or during the the bachelor's i would say never stop uh getting informed never stop thinking never stop training and don't give up if you have a very bad experience in in an interview because that's really important i had some interviews where basically People told me, yeah, well, why are you applying if you don't know anything? And mm. this is proved wrong after some years. But obviously, uh, some some recruiters don't really know, yeah, you know, this kind of, yeah, uh, how how the people feel when you say something, you know, because they make you think, okay, maybe I'm doing everything wrong. That's not true. You just need practice. You need to to have a lot of interviews, and after that, you really know how an interview work and works, and so you can easily. Uh, answer the questions or yeah get yeah. more informed about what happened 
Yeah. I think that's an awesome place to leave on because I think a lot of people don't realize that interviewing itself is such an important skill, um, life skill yeah. that needs to be honed, needs to be practiced just like any other skill. It's mm-hmm. not just about having the knowledge to do the job. It's about having, it's about having the knowledge of how to actually land the job. And that is a huge part of that is yeah. obviously how to, how to communicate, how to sell yourself in the interview. So anyway, well, Absolutely, yeah. Dr. Snake, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for coming on the pod and sharing your wisdom. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way, patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Until next time.